Hello everybody. Today I'll give you a short overview of Color Cone version 2. In version 2.3, the plugin now has the exact same functionality as the standalone version. The only difference is that all the presets are not saved in the software itself, they are saved in the plugin host. After dragging the plugin from your effect section onto the clip, you can open Color Cone's own user interface. All of Color Cone settings are saved in your project as parameters, and of course, they can be keyframe animated. I will talk about the skin tone features and the newly added option to automatically determine the radius of the individual points in greater detail in just a moment. But first, I would like to give those of you who are not so familiar with Color Cone a quick introduction. With Color Cone, you can select and adjust any color range. Use the eyedropper tool with the small plus to create a new point in the cone and select the color you wish to adjust. This will be your source color. To make sure that there will be no sudden changes when you first set the point, the target color will initially be set to the same value as the source color. With this button, you can display your color selection with a pink overlay. With the radius control, you can determine how many of the adjacent colors surrounding your source color value will be affected. Now I turn off the pink overlay since we want to see and judge the effect our adjustments have on changing the target color. The three controls in the target area change the hue, saturation and brightness of your color selection. This makes it very easy to change certain color ranges like for example the sky's blue or the greens of grass. You can also desaturate areas of the image that were originally neutral to perform a white balance which will have a more selective or a more global effect depending on the size of the radius. By tinting neutral tones with various brightness values, you can, for example, reproduce the very popular three-way color correction or a split toning. There is also a preset for each of those two very popular methods in Color Cone. By now, you have probably seen how powerful Color Cone is. Let me just quickly save this look as a preset because I want to continue from here in a second. Since it is possible that points overlap in Color Cone, which could mean that the effects of those points either mix or cancel each other out, we have added a useful Auto Radius feature. If the Auto Radius button is activated for a selected point, the radius of this point will automatically grow until the border of the area of influence touches the adjacent point. In this case, the value for the radius is not being calculated and just set once. If the Auto Radius feature is activated, the point's radius is constantly being adjusted both when the point is being moved and also when another point is about to invade its area of influence. To illustrate this, I have loaded a gradient and with the split tone preset, I tint one area blue and the other orange. First, I reduce the radius for both points a little bit so that the brightness areas are clearly separated. By pressing and holding the command key on a Mac or the control key in Windows, I can move both the source and the target value of a point at the same time and, for example, move the tint for the shadows all across the entire brightness range of the image. As you can see, the effects are overlapping and when they do, they cancel each other out. Now, if you set the point to Auto Radius, it will grow just until it touches the border of the adjacent point. If you now move the point toward the other, the radius is automatically reduced. If you move the point further away, the radius increases. The same happens if you move the other point in this direction. By clicking on the Auto Radius All feature, all existing points are set to auto radius and will always be inflated until they touch their next neighbor. Well, back to our look from before. To do that, I quit the current instance of Color Cone and quickly recall the preset I saved earlier. I quite like the tint already. 
Unfortunately, the color correction has also affected all of the skin tones, which looks a bit unnatural here. For this case, Color Cone now has an extra skin tone section. You can use the first control to protect the skin tones from the tint of the cone. With the other two controls, you can adjust the saturation as well as the hue of the skin tone range independent of the cone itself. Finally, you can also adjust contrast saturation and brightness of the entire image. And voila! That's how you get to a complex color correction in no time. Have a lot of fun working with Color Cone. Did you like this video? Then why don't you subscribe to our channel? And don't forget to click on that little bell to make sure that you receive notifications whenever we upload a new video. Your Picture Instruments Team.